as a primer I thought I'd discuss a bit of trigonometry. As you're probably already aware there is a triangle, right angle triangle, with lengths 1, square root 3, it will have a hypotenuse of 2, and the angles inside the triangle will be 60 and 30. Oof, that's an awful three, but never mind. And going by so toa, we can describe the three trigonometric identities sine, cos, and tan. And so you have sine theta equals the opposite over hypotenuse, which if taking this angle here, 60, would be square root 3 over 2. So if sine 60 equals square root 3 over 2. You can do the same for cos and tan. So what does a sine graph actually look like. Starting at zero, there's a peak, comes down, intersects at 180 degrees and comes back up. So that's 180, 360, and then it will continue like that, positive and negative. The difference between cos is that it starts at 1, but it does the exact same thing. I'm now inside the JMonkey Engine SDK. I'm going to go to File, New Project, Basic Game. I'm going to call this project Math Tutorials. I'm going to go to Source Packages, the My Game Package, double click main.java. This is the automatic file that is created for us. It extends simple application and it has three overridable methods simple init app, simple update, and simple render. I won't be using simple render, so I'm going to be getting rid of that. Simple init app is called once at the start of a game launch, and simple update runs every frame. So I'm going to be clicking F6 and it will launch our game. We have some display settings we can change, the resolution, the bit depth, if we want anti-aliasing, want to run the game in full screen, or enable vertical sync, which means that the frames per second runs at the screen refresh rate. Click OK and it will run our game. So now we have our basic blue cube. We can move around with the mouse, with the arrow keys. We can strafe forward and backwards with W, S, and strafe left and right with A and D. Press escape to close the game down. I'm now going to get rid of the code for the, for the box, except for the material, which I'll be using later. If you want to understand more about how that code works, I suggest you read the wiki tutorials on the JMonkey Engine website. Okay, I'm now going to show you how to create a sine curve. First of all, I'm going to create a new line. Type in new O for new object. Tab, if you didn't know that shortcut. Type line. I'm going to set the start of the line to um, the origin. I'm going to set the end of the line to a random vector, so 4, 5, 6. I then need to create a new geometry out of the line mesh. I'm going to give it a name of line and assign it the line mesh. And then I've already created a new material, so I'm just going to assign the material to the geometry. I'm then going to attach it to the root node so it's visible on the screen. Geometry. Then Control Shift I to fix all the imports. And because there's more than one line class available, I need to choose the correct one, which is scene shape line. Click OK. F6 to run the game. 
I'm going to run out the default settings. I unchecked vertical sync because there was some issues with the screen capture program and it wasn't running efficiently. So now fix that. And there's our line. Brilliant. Let's escape to close that down. I'm now going to show you how to draw the line, the sine curve. So if you remember from the previous lesson, sine curve looks like this. Very good. Intersects at 180 degrees or pi radians. The JMonkey engine mainly uses radians, so we also have to adopt this. So I'm going to be creating this out of a series of lines. Loads of different lines joined together. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Going to be getting rid of that line code. So I'm going to for each line I need to store the start and the end. So I'm going to be storing the start. I'm going to call that the start vector. It's going to give that the origin. We need to do the same for the new vector. I'll just also give it the origin for now. And I'm going to create a for loop. So, well, x is less than or equal to 2 times pi. Use the fast math class for that. So, it's also 360 degrees. I'm going to increment it by 0.1. And then, going to create a new line. Setting it to the start vector and the end vector. Nope. Uh, I'll call that new vector. Okay, but first of all, I need to change where the vectors are pointing. And what's happened here? I need to assign that to zero. So I'm going to say that the new height is going to be fastmath.sign of x and x is just going to be left as x and so the new vector equals vector x, y I'm going to leave z as 0 for the next iteration, I then need to store the start vector as the last vector we had here. We need to create a new geometry out of the line. Let's not forget that. Name that line, use the line mesh. Set the material of the geometry to the one we've already defined. Add it to the root node. And F6 to try and see if it works. Brilliant. We don't have to use just sign. I could use a lot of other things. We're going to just use X squared. Oh, yeah. 